Hello everyone, this is Teacher Mary Chu and welcome to our learning activity video on Senior High School Statistics and Probability, Quarter 3, Week 1, D. For the objective, we have the learner illustrates a probability distribution for a discrete random variable and its properties. Let us start with the exercise. For Roman numeral 1, number 1, construct the sample space of an experiment of tossing three unbiased coins. Determine its discrete probability distribution. Now for the solution, we let T represents the tail of the coin and we let H represents its head. And these are the elements in the sample space S. We have triple tails, a double tail, and head, a tail, a head, and a tail, a tail, a head, and a head, and so on. So there are eight possible outcomes. Now let us show the eight possible outcomes in the sample space S together with its probability distribution in a tabular form. So we have here the number of heads or tails, and let's assign it with a random variable x and x could take values such as 0 1 2 and 3 then we have the probability of x equals 0 is 1 out of the 8 possible outcomes the probability of x equals 1 or one tail or one head is 3 out of 8 possible outcomes the probability of x equals 2 is also 3 out of 8 and the probability that x is equal to 3 heads or 3 tails is 1 out of 8. Now to determine whether the properties of a probability distribution are satisfied, we have 1. What is p of x equals 0 or p of 0? And this is p of 0 equals 1 8. And that is equal also to P of 3. So they have the same probability distribution value. And it is equal to 0 0.125. Then, on the other hand, the probability of X equals 1, this one, this is equal to 3 eighths. And this is the same as the probability of X equals 2, 3 eighths. Or, converted to decimal, we have 0 0.125. 375. Hence, we can say that the probability of all the x's here is between 0 and 1. Hence, property number 1 of the probability distribution function is satisfied. Number 2, the sum of the probabilities of all values of the random variable in that particular exercise x must be equal to 1. And this is denoted as the summation of p of x, where x here is from 0 to 3. This is equal to p of 0 plus p of 1 plus p of 2 plus p of 3. So we have to plug in the values as you can see in the previous table. So 1 8 plus 3 8 plus 3 8 plus 1 8 equals 8 over 8 or simply equal to 1. Hence, property number 2 of the probability distribution function is satisfied. Moving on to exercise number 2. Construct a discrete random probability distribution for a basketball team's probability of winning in four consecutive games. For the solution, we let W represents winning the game of the basketball team and we let L represents losing the game. So we have here capital letter S in which the elements are all elements of the sample space. In this case, we start with four W's. That means in four consecutive games, they have four wins. Then we can say here in this particular outcome, 3W1L, 3 wins, 1 lose. Then we have 2 wins, 1 loss, another win. 
then and so on. So we have all in all 16 possible outcomes. Now we have here the column for the possible outcomes and the number of wins in a basketball game and let's call that random variable x. Now the technique here is to identify first. As we can see in the earlier slides, we have 16 possible outcomes. And how did we get 16? That is actually 2 raised to 4 because there are 4 consecutive games. And why 2? Because there are only two possible outcomes in every game. It's either a win or a lose game. So meaning, we have 2 raised to 4, that is 16. Divide 16 by 2, so that's 8. So we have to write first 8 W's. And on the next slide, succeeding this one is 8L. Once we've written that, let's concentrate on this first. Then we have... Let's concentrate on the 8 W's in the first game, or 8 wins. Then on the second game, there are two possibilities. It's either win or lose. So divide 8 by 2. So that means 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we will write here 4 wins, 4 loss. And on the third game, then we have 4 W's here, or 4 L. We divide it by 2 again. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we have 2W, 2L, 2W, 2L. And on the last game, the fourth game, there are two possibilities. Or we can say in this third game, there are two W's and two L's. So two W's or two L's divided by 2, then we have 1. So we write here win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, or WL, WL alternately. And let's count the number of wins here. In this particular outcome, the 4W, we have 4 wins. And in this particular outcome, triple W and 1L. So in this case, we have 3. Now we're moving on here. How many W's? We write 3. In this case, we have two W's or two wins. In this particular outcome, we have three wins. And this one is two wins, two wins, and one win. We move on to the next table, the last eight. 8L, eight then 4W, 4L, 2W, 2L, 2W, 2 L and W L W L. Then let's count the number of wins. In this case, we have three W, two W next. Then we have two. Another is one W, two Ws. Then we have one W, one W, and zero W. So we will take the probability of X equals zero. It's actually one out of the 16 possible outcomes. What is the probability of having x equals 1 or 1 win? So we have there are 4. 4 over 16 or simply 1 fourth. But let's make it as 16 as the denominator. Then p of 2 is 6 over 16. p of 3, we have 4 over 16. And P of 4 is 1 over 16. The probability of each value of the random variable X or the number of wins in a basketball team is between 0 and 1. So meaning, property number 1 is satisfied in of the probability distribution function. For property 2 to satisfy, let's check whether... The summation of all the probabilities for the values of x ranges from 0 to 4 is equal to 1. And it is equal to 1. The sum of the probabilities of all the values of the random variable x is equal to 1. Hence, property 2 of the probability distribution function is satisfied. Next is we have to compare answers from example 2 and exercises 1 and 2 and answer the questions that follow.
Here are the questions. Observe the probability distribution on both example 2 and exercises 1 and 2. What do you notice about the probability of each value of the random variable x? Write your conclusion regarding this matter. Here is the example 2 illustration. I will just browse it over for you to run through with this. Okay, it's very self-explanatory. And the conclusion. So part of the conclusion, you can say that both example 2 and exercises 1 and 2 have probabilities of greater than 0 but are less than 1. So in symbol, meaning P of X is between 0 and 1. Or let me read this one. 0 is less than P of X or the probability of the random variable X. And the probability of the random variable X is less than 1. This is strictly less than. Meaning, um, out of the examples, there is no probability of getting 0. And there is also no probability of getting a 1. Both or all of the probabilities are less than 1 greater than 0. So property 1 of the probability distribution function is satisfied. Number 2, get the sum of the probabilities of all values of the random variable in the example 2 and the two exercises. What sum did you get? Write your conclusion regarding this matter. For the conclusion, we have the sum of the probabilities of all values of the random variable x in the exercises and in the example is equal to 1. So property 2 of the probability distribution function is satisfied. Now next is we have to determine whether the given values can serve as the value of a probability distribution of the random variable x that can take on only values of 1, 2, and 3. And we, we have to explain the answer. For number 1, it's given here p of 1 equals 0 0.08, p of 2 is equal to 0 0.12, and p of 3 is equal to 1.03. Take note here, is this a probability distribution of the random variable x? Well, the answer is no. The given values cannot serve as the probabilities of the random variable x. Why? Look at p of 1, p of 2, and p of 3. You notice that p of 1 is greater than 1. And there is no such thing as greater than 1. So this P of 3, I mean P of 3 is greater than 1. P of 3 equals 1.03 violates property 1 of the probability distribution function. So number 1 is no. For number 2, P of 1 is 10 over 33. P of 2 is 11 over 33 or 1 third. P of 3 is equal to 12 over 33. You notice that all the probabilities here, 10 over 33, 11 over 33, and 12 over 33, satisfies property 1. This values, the three values, is between or are between 0 and 1. And also, if you sum up the probabilities of P1 plus P2 plus P3, then we have 33 over 33 or simply equal to 1. For number 3, P of 1 equals 0 0.42, P of 2 is equal to 0 0.31, and P of 3 is equal to 0 0.37. Well, the answer here is no. Why? Property 2 of the probability distribution function is not satisfied by the given probabilities. Since if we sum this up, then it's 1.1. It's more than 1. For number 4, P of 1 is 9 over 14, P of 2 is 4 over 14, P of 3 is 1 over 14. Yes, the properties 1 and 2 of the probability distribution function are satisfied by the given probabilities. 
For number 5, p of 1 equals 0, p of 2 equals 0 0.71, and p of 3 is equal to 0 0.39. Still, it's not a probability distribution, or meaning these values, p1, p of 2, and p of 3, are not a probability of the random variable x. Because why? Property 2 of the probability distribution is not satisfied by the given probabilities. Okay, since if we sum this up, we have 1.1 again, and it's greater than 1. So for the reference, we have here the math box for the senior high school statistics and probability quarter 3, week 1, B. If you are not yet a subscriber of my channel, kindly subscribe and please don't forget to like and share. And if you are a subscriber, you will be updated with more uploads for this learning activity videos. Thank you and always stay happy, healthy, and safe. Bye!